King Midas and the Golden Touch by Demi. Demi, King Midas and the Golden Touch. Long ago, the ancient Greeks believed that their gods were in the sky as the winds, the seas, and the mountains. In everything, people prayed to the gods for wisdom and power, knowledge and generosity, and moderation in all their ways. There reigned in Phrygia a king named Midas. He was weak and ignorant, miserly and greedy, and he didn't think he needed to pray to the gods at all. Everything King Midas did was backward. One day, King Midas was asked to judge a music contest between the great god Apollo and the little god Pan. The little god Pan had a snub nose and horns, ears, and hooves of a goat. He was mischievous and tricky. He was a protector of the shepherds and their flocks, and he played little pipes of reeds in the woods and on the mountains. Apollo was known throughout the heavens under the earth as the god of harmony and music. A single note he sang could put the whole universe in order. Apollo was so majestic and beautiful, the other gods called him the Shining One and compared him to the sun. Apollo was so powerful that he could inflict illness with his bows and arrows. The contest began and Apollo played first. His notes on the lyre were so pure and sweet, they sang through the woods and the fields. Even the birds were silent as they listened to the beautiful music. Then it was Pan's turn. He blew shrill, discordant sounds on his pipes. All of the geese flew out of the pond. Squirrels scurried up trees and skunks hid in their holes. Anybody with any sense would have given the prize to the great god Apollo. But King Midas didn't have any sense. Wonderful, wonderful, applauded the king. I crown little Pan the winner with this laurel wreath. Of course, Apollo was furious. Someone who is as stupid and tone deaf as you should have ears to match. From now on, you shall have donkey ears. And to his horror, King Midas found long, pointed, furry ears sprouting from his head. King Midas was miserable. The king grew his hair long and wrapped it around his ears to hide them in case his crown ever fell off. But soon he had too much hair. He visited the royal barber, who snipped and clipped and was astonished to find his king had donkey ears. The barber knew he must keep the king's secret, but he found it very hard to do. The barber ran to the river Pactuus and dug a deep hole in the sandy bank. And into this hole he whispered his secret. King Midas has donkey ears. He covered the secret with sand and returned to the palace. Reeds grew over the secret spot. The winds whispered the question, who has donkey ears? And from somewhere below would come the answer, King Midas. One summer evening, Dionysus, the god of feasting and merriment, hosted a party in Phrygia. Long after the party ended, one guest remained, asleep in a rose patch. This was Selenius, the satyr, half man, half animal. Selenius had a horse's tail, hooves, and ears. King Midas's men found Selenius and tied him up with rose garlands. They put a rosy wreath on his head and brought him before the king. King Midas was happy to entertain one such as he, a man with long furry ears. So for many days the king and Selenius played together like children until Selenius realized that Dionysus must be looking for him. King Midas took Selenius back to Dionysus. In gratitude for the return of his charge, Dionysus said to King Midas, Ask for anything you like and I will give it to you. King Midas' eyes grew round and his heart grew cold. I want everything I touch to turn to gold. Granted, Dionysus said, and he departed with Selenius. King Midas jumped and skipped and hopped back to his palace. The earth turned to gold beneath his feet. Running from room to room, the king touched all he could, and everything turned to gold. 
Soon the palace gleamed and shone like one hundred suns. King Midas was the richest man in the world, and he thought he was happy. King Midas sat down to eat. The chair turned to gold. The cup and the dish turned to gold. The utensils turned to gold. He tried to drink, but the liquid was a solid ribbon of gold. His meat and vegetables, dessert, all turned to gold. None could be eaten. Bring me food I can eat, shouted King Midas. Pushing aside his servants, they instantly turned to gold. It was not long before every piece of furniture and every living thing in the king's palace were gold. Even the mice. King Midas was in despair. Why did I ever ask for such a stupid gift, King Midas cried. What a fool I am. His teardrops turned to gold and bounced harshly on the golden floor. To find out how to change his gift, King Midas consulted an oracle, a priestess through whom the gods speak. The priestess says, Bathe in the waters of the river Pactolus, and the curse of gold will be lifted. King Midas ran to the river Pactolus and jumped into the water, and instantly the river gleamed with the gold the king had shed, and the curse was lifted. When he returned to his palace, King Midas found everything as it had been before, and before he had his golden touch, and he was happy.